Instagram and to the spotlight. Hi, how's it going? You're in New Zealand, yes? That's right. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and I say it's yeah, the middle I, of the day? No, it's um eight o'clock in the morning or have, you know, about eight o'clock okay. in the morning. Yeah. But eight so it's quite a, on yeah. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Oh so my it's goodness. it's good that you've changed them all to midday because sometimes they were at five o'clock in the morning and I'd often um miss them. So yeah, so it's really good to talk to you in person. I know well, these questions I'm... I've got are a bit um basic. But I was sitting here doing my stitching, as you do, thinking, and I just wondered how you um, you did a few of these things um, that I've asked the questions about. Okay, well, let's start at the beginning. First up, now you're stitching on a banana, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, an 880. Which one? Yeah. An 880. That, yeah. Mm. Okay. So, um, and specifically quilting you're asking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first off, do you pull up the bobbin thread at the beginning of the designs? Now, this is a really interesting thing. Whenever I'm free motion quilting, I always want to pull the bobbin thread up to the top, have the both of them kind of sitting out of the way so that you can start stitching and then you can either bury them both or clip them really close to the surface and have done with it. The embroidery machines, um, the 880 specifically well most of the banana machines their instinct is to pull a thread down because it wants to cut it um my eight series machines the 830s and the 880s it's really no point trying to pull the thread up to the top you can do and sometimes it works but most of the time the machine is still going to want to pull both of the the top and the bobbin thread down so that it can cut them. Right. Yeah. So this is one of the, um, it's like if you have pros and cons for free motion quilting versus um, um, quilting in the hoop, I would put the thread ends as one of the cons for quilting in the hoop. Um, some of the machines, I, I'm Marilyn Weaver has, a seven series machine and her machine allows her to pull a bobbin thread up to the top and start stitching and it's perfectly happy. The new Benina 990 machine actually has the option to tell the machine you you want to go into quilting mode as it as it is and you you start out by pulling the bobbin thread up to the top and you start quilting and it's beautiful. Oh, so okay. That that's one of the awesome things about the Benina 990 machine. Um, but on your Benina 880, it's hit and miss whether or not whether or not it'll work. To some extent, it's easier just to let it do its thing because otherwise you're going to be fighting it. Yeah. So when you have the little bits at the back, the little where it cuts it and it doesn't cut it right, you've just got a little wee piece of thread. Do you then trim those off afterwards or do you just leave it so that it doesn't unravel? I leave, I trim them. Well, okay. I usually ask somebody else to do the trimming off the floor. <laughs> yeah, so that's right. But you would trim them. But yes, typically you would trim them. And if you're using cotton thread, the knot is usually perfectly good to hold really tight. Yeah, if you're no, using I... polyester in the top and the bottom, then I would be a little bit more worried because that is more slippery. So yeah. the knot isn't as likely to hold. Um, but if you're using, for instance, RFL cotton maco in the top and the bottom, then you should be good. Yeah, I usually use glide because I like the um the sort of sheen that it puts on it. Yeah. Right. So that's why I'm a bit where you know, but apprehensive about um trimming them too close. Yeah, I so, just, you know, so, yeah. Um, my question yeah. is, how much time do you spend looking at the back of your quilts? Well, yeah, no, not a lot. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> unless you're putting it into a judge competition, I think there's a lot of people that spend an awful lot of time worrying about how the back looks. Right, yeah, when, fair enough, good point. <laughs> when, when, you, when you could be a little bit more forgiving of yourself. You know, mm. and I'm absolutely not saying do shoddy work. 
no no I'm absolutely not saying that I'm I I'm take pride in your work but you know that as I said there's pros and cons to various yeah. ways of doing things and probably the the one thing on the cons of the quilting and the hoop would be the start off uh, and the little thread ends um mm. yeah eat, okay and I've I've said this one before um go bedazzled even though that was free motion quilted I used the thread cutter at the end mm -hmm. when I was doing the free motion quilting so I actually had a lot of those little half inch thread end bits hanging yeah. off the bottom of that that quilt won first place in Houston oh, Libby oh, Lehman wow. was one of the judges and one of the comments was next time please trim your thread ends <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, Even so, if you have yeah. got a quilt that you're putting in a judge competition, you can still win a first pl a, a, a blue ribbon with it. Even yeah. when you got those little thread ends on it, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Next question: the cut cutting threads. Do you have your automatic cutter on? I always have my automatic cutter turned off. Off. Yeah. So the only time that it's going to cut for me is when it gets to the end of a color and it stops and there's a new color it's waiting for me to change the thread to a new color that is the only time that I have the cutter on I personally find that um things go a lot faster yeah. if you're not waiting for the machine to do its cutting mm -hmm. all of the time right um, yeah and I I find that I can you know trim because again, if it, if the automatic cutter is coming on, it's going to draw the threads down and it's going to leave your half inch mm. long tails. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you let it do the jump, you can clip right close to the surface on the top and on the on the back. Mm. Yep. So, oh, yeah. So yeah, my my automatic cutter. The other thing is that my machines have a tendency. Well, sometimes they have a tendency to ping the thread out of the needle when the cutter yeah and mm -hmm. and it's like you know what i it, it's just faster and easier to keep the cutters turned off and do it manually mm -hmm. yeah okay oh, yeah when doing the quilting if the designs don't meet up would you sew between the end and the beginning of the quilting no um so th this is another kind of on the pros and cons when you're doing free motion quilting there's a lot more liberty to kind of stitching the ditch around applique shapes to get you to new places mm. um you know to get from one area of the quilt to another area of the quilt when you're quilting in the hoop and you you've done your applique and you're literally quilting the whole quilt sandwich um with the quilt in the hoop you're not as much at liberty to travel from one area of the quilt to another area of the quilt because it's just not possible to get you know, really close up to the applique shapes, mm. um, which is why I was saying um, earlier, I typically leave an eighth of an inch around my applique shapes. And that's yeah. th that's usually pretty good for being decently close without ha actually quilting over the edges of the applique shapes. So um, if you wanted to get in there and sew between the ends, yeah, you no, know, that, I did do that. It's, it's, I think it's because um, they don't actually, I mean, you probably can't see this, but on here, where is it? I mean, if I can't even find it when I'm so close, then it probably doesn't really matter. But see how my quilting doesn't quite join up there? And that that's, probably is, it's probably. That's going to be from one hooping to a next hooping. Yeah. Yeah. So the, again, it's typically going to be there are situations where we we will create the quilting designs so that you can start a, a, start the new ver, new section of quilting exactly where you stopped the previous version of quilting. Um what 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 pops into my mind right now is um the rejoice quilt the borders of that were designed so that it looks like a continuous line of quilting. The butterfly is another one. 
Um, the butterfly border, it was actually designed so that you could put um, the next piece of the feather, you know, you stitch out, say the center piece of the feather, and then this piece of the feather butts right in. Um, and, and the alignment on that was possible because we're literally quilting a border. So we've got a straight line and I can mm. say, start right here, which yeah. is where you ended. Practical Joy being a completely different kettle of fish, the quilting is quite different. And I have a version of Practical Joy on the wall here, which is why I'm looking over here. Um, it the, the quilting is a lot more freeform on this quilt. Um, so going from one hooping to another hooping. Mm, yeah, no, I just, it, you I, know, I, for the most part, yeah. it, it, I guess it I would be it, possible. It just, it's, it's like how hard you want to make it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Versus yeah. how easy can we yeah. make it. Mm, yeah. And one thing that um, I found quite hard to do were these here, quilting these. So uh -huh. It's my, the, the previous ones I had been a bit um, putting it together. I hadn't been super, super, super particular about getting the quarter inch and everything right. And then, of course, when you go to do the quilting, it it doesn't quite, you know, they don't all meet up. Um, so this one, number eight, I decided, right, I'm going to do this perfectly. And I still couldn't get it to um, line up perfectly. So I was wondering, next time you do something like this, Sarah, <laughs> my, could you um, do each one and, and as an individual so that that's you can a, actually... Yeah, that's, yeah, you're kind of hitting the nail on the head here. Even though we might have a hoop that's this big, yeah. sometimes it's easier to quilt this much and this much and this much. Right, yeah. So if you do that, the, the up and down bit on one side, then the other side, and then do that, and then we can move on to the next one so that they're individual. Yeah, so that's, a... that, that's possible. And if you had the software, you could um, you, you could actually do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you just and, – and we actually did this – I did this when it, for um, the Hearts and Kisses quilt, the four-inch blocks at least – because you can fit three of them in a hoop, three of the four inch blocks, you can fit that easily in a hoop, you know, yeah. 12 inches tall, right? But I found it was actually a lot easier to just use the single block design, hoop it so that all three of them could be quilted at the mm. same time, but stitch one design, get that really aligned, perfectly aligned, then bring in the design again, and I, I typically will add the design new versus just moving up what I've already got, um, which is more than likely going to have rotations and this, that, and the other, um, and then position the next part exactly, stitch that, then bring it in again, stitch the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that I was getting, I'm going to get a 990 because my, doing your designs and having to get everything so precise. I'm getting RSI in my in my wrist, turning my turning my needle up and down so I can see where I am. So that's the great reason to get the new 990. Even yeah. But I'm going I've sold my house. I'm going away for six months. So I'm not going to get it for six months. And I'm not going to be able to do any embroidery for six months. So that's oh, really, no. really I know it's really sad. <laughs> Well, I would say, because um, I did get to play with a 9, I can't remember if I told you guys, but I did get to play with a 990 when I was at Quilt Direct in England. And possibly top three reasons to get a 990 would be the quilting, the, op the, the option to set it to quilting mode so that you can bring your bot bottom thread up or your bobbin thread up to the top. That I thought was really cool. The laser... It literally shines down yeah. the point of the needle. So you can see exactly where your needle's gonna hit. So you don't need to be doing the whole hand no. thing. Yeah. And the four point alignment. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the fact that you can actually take the photo and you can see yes. what you've actually got on where it yes. is and you can just move it around. I thought 
Yeah, so it's all your fault I'm going to be getting this 990, Sarah, because if I wasn't doing your embroideries. <laughs> now, it's Marie, right, at um, your dealer? Oh, yes, Marie. Yes, he sold his shop. Oh, no. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so she's shifting out of her shop um, at the end of the month, I think, yeah. So, um, yeah, so she's she's very busy lady with doing all sorts of other things. We're all going to get, there's a few of us that are going to get the 990, so we're going to get together and probably do it on Zoom because you can't actually go and meet with your 990 anywhere because they're so jolly heavy. So, um, but we yeah, can they still are do big. We can do Zoom meetings like you do, you know, the stitch outs and, um, yeah. Well, say yeah, hi that... to Marie from me. I haven't seen her I in will. years, actually. Yeah, I should tell her she travels all around the world because her husband's um, big up in St. John Ambulance. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so she goes around. Oh, no, not St. John, no, Red Cross. Oh, one of them, I'm not sure. St. John's, I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Do okay. you have St. John's over there? I don't know. Well, it's the ambulance service anyway, yeah. Okay. So, perhaps it's, I'm sure it's St. John. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, I think that was all my questions, was it? Um, was let's see. Last night at midnight. <laughs> okay, well, so you said on the bigger applique designs, do you stitch around any of the shapes or is there is oh, not yeah. such a big unstitched area on the back of the quilt? If um, oh. that's something that if you wanted to do, you could do. Yeah. If, if you don't mind doing a little bit of free motion in the ditch around the applique shapes, it's typically not necessary. We endeavor to kind of do yeah, as much quilt as possible. I'm just looking um, like the, the windmill pinwheel block has a decently large unquilted bit in the middle of it. Um, the sailing boat um, with the sun. Well, actually, that one, we've actually got uh, some quilting in the in in between the rays the picnic basket is another one which is a big applique mm -hmm. um and the coffee pot is a pretty big applique so if you wanted there's absolutely no reason why not to mm -hmm. go in there and do a little bit of yeah. Um, yeah. in the ditch around the appliques yeah well thank so you that, very much that's it that's the end of your questions well it's so good to see you and i'm happy that this works for you to be able to join us Oh, yeah, it's great. So I'll be in Australia for about four months. So that'll be a couple of hours earlier and I'll be staying with grandchildren. So I might not actually join live. I might have to just watch it on replay. <laughs> well, Which... we've got it in replay in in your library. We've got a replay in YouTube and we've got a replay on Facebook. So, yeah, that's good. That's great. Oh, lovely talking to you. And, you too. Um, yeah, I'll... Catch up with you again one day. <laughs> okay, sounds good, okay. John. Okay, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye.